Coming up on DTNS, it's the Big Tech Quiz of 2021. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, December 23rd, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. From lovely Cleveland, Ohio, I'm Rich Straffolino. Drawing the top tech stories from also from lovely Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. I am on the West Coast and I'm the show's producer, Roger Ching. And we're joined by our original producer, podcast producer, and self-described corporate sellout, Jenny Josephson. Well, Good hi, you, everybody. Jenny. Hi. Uh, we were just talking with Jenny and a bunch of other folks uh, who may be uh, joining uh, back in here on DTNS in a few minutes on our longer version of this show. If you want more goodness, Good Day Internet, available at patreon.com slash DTNS. Big thanks to our top patrons, including Reed Fischler, Michelle Sergio, and Mike McLaughlin. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Huawei released the P50 Pocket, a clamshell-style foldable. It features a 120 hertz, 6.9-inch screen when unfolded, offers a circular display for notifications when folded, and uses the Snapdragon 888 4G SoC. It uses a new zero-gap hinge and supports face unlock on both screens. It's available in China starting at 8,988 yuan. That's about 1,400 U.S. dollars. Earlier this month, Intel sent a note to suppliers in Xinjiang notifying them they would not purchase goods or services sourced from the Xinjiang region. The U.S. accuses China of human rights abuses in the region. After receiving public criticism in China over the letter, Intel posted to WeChat Thursday to say the supplier notes were, quote, a statement of compliance and legality only and are not meant to express its intent or position. And then Intel apologized for, quote, any distress the notes caused. Wednesday, Square CEO Jack Dorsey posted a screenshot of a notification that Mark Andreessen had blocked him. Dorsey added the text, I'm officially banned from Web3. Dorsey went on to rant about decentralization, Web3, and the blockchain earlier this week and called Andreessen's A16Z VC firm by name. Researcher Jane Manchin Wong pointed out that several other tech execs have also blocked Dorsey. Good reporting, Jane. Samsung announced its 2022 Neo QLED TVs and gaming monitors will support the recently announced HDR10 Plus gaming standard. Uh, this includes support for variable refresh rates up to 120 hertz and real-time color calibration. Samsung and Adata also announced an 8-terabyte PCIe 5.0 SSD for consumers and, if you're in the enterprise, a 15-terabyte model. Sorry, I drilled a little. Engage. LG showed off a media chair concept ahead of CES, which features a curved rotating 55 inch OLED TV attached to a reclining chair. LG said it's working with a Korean massage chair company to commercialize the concept. Lenovo announced it will suspend in-person attendance at CES. Lenovo was the first major hardware company to pull out of the trade show's in-person component, but not the last, as Intel then announced that it would minimize its in-person presence at the show. Alphabet's Waymo also announced it would attend the show. I would not attend the show in person. All these companies will still participate virtually, though. You'd think they just send the autonomous cars. And Bloomberg has seen internal Amazon data that indicates between 2018 and 2021, as many as 15 to 25 percent of new voice assistant users stop actively using devices after just two weeks. Bloomberg says Amazon predicts the market will expand 1.2 percent annually for the next several years. That's on Echo devices. A 2019 document claimed new users discover half of the features they will ever use on an Echo device within the first three hours of activation. All right, folks, if you want to hear us talk about something on the show, one way to let us know is our subreddit. Now, we won't be doing new shows until January 3rd, 4th, but uh, around that time, you want to get a, a submission in there, go to dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Well, Jenny Josephson, uh, it's it's time to finish up our, our last live show. I'm really, really happy that you could join us. We wanted to finish with a quiz uh, of questions to finish out the year uh, about the technology events that happened this year. Do, but but are you prepared for that? No, I really feel like if I could raise my eyes to the sky and wish for help, uh, it would be a lot better for me because I haven't been as plugged into the tech universe as I would like to be. So is there okay. any way my Christmas wish could be granted? Uh, well, let, let, let me just shout some names out into the atmosphere and see if the magic of Christmas can make them appear to, to help us out. Uh, Chris Ashley. Chris Ashley. Yo, I'm here. Poof. 
Oh my gosh! That's Guess who a, came amazing. in the room? <laughs> uh, uh, Dan Campos. Dan Campos. Are, can, can... Estaba comiendo unos tacos. Where am I? Where am I? Oh, all the way from Mexico City. We pulled him in. It's amazing. Uh, let me try this one. Rob Dunwood. What up, though? Oh, hey, it worked. I'm uh, here to okay. make sure that I get the answers wrong to bring the quota of right to wrong <laughs> to put it in place. Yeah, let's balance out the the world needs balance, Rob. We appreciate that. Wait, wait, can uh, I try one? Can I try yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, I want an old school DTNS early guest who shouldn't currently be awake. Would that be Nate Langson? Oh, this is British Santa, you mean? Hello. Oh, <laughs> Jenny's this powers is, reach across oceans. That's right. Uh, all right, let me let, let me try one. Uh, Patrick Norton. I can even turn off mute. <laughs> oh, that is magical. Truly a Christmas miracle. <laughs> all right, uh, and 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 uh, and just because you know he's always there, you know he's always in the background. But uh, our producer Amos Anthony Lemus. Hello, the legend. Um, All right. Love that. <laughs> I have got, uh, I have got a, uh, a a little bit of of quiz music for us uh, to bring us into this, and I I have an ability to tell you if you are right or wrong. If you are right, you will hear this. If you are wrong, you will hear this. Wrong. <laughs> <sighs> uh, Patrick Norton, you had a question. Did Richard and Jenny not get the email about this being a, a, a very beardy podcast? I just noticed that. This is the only I, time I've ever seen this many beards in one podcast. I just spent an hour getting podcast. rid of my mustache. Don't make me bring one back. <laughs> That's the one gift Santa will never bring. That's right. All right. Uh, our, our first quiz question uh, will, we will, first, our first round, we will go in order uh, by person, but each person can call on another person to aid them. So, Jenny, we will start with you. The question is, what was the first story on the first DTNS of this year, which happened on January 4th? Okay, so I obviously don't know the answer because I wasn't daily watching and listening to DTNS, but I'm going to say that it either has something to do with, because, like, there's only a couple things you talk about at the beginning of January, uh, it's either something to do with CES or something to do with Julian Assange. Uh, <laughs> you're you're very close. You're very close. Would you That's like to? That's all I know. Would I, you I, like I, to call on Nate Langson for a Yes, I would. <laughs> yes. Was was I on the show on that day? I was no. going to say CES, but I would assume it would be no. something about it being canceled. One of those two answers she gave was happening in the UK. That's why I picked you as a hint. Oh well, it has to be Julian Assange, of course. <laughs> Indeed, indeed it is. Wow. UK Judge Vanessa Beretzer of Westminster Magistrates Court ruled that WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange could not be extradited to the U.S. at that time to face trial on charges of violating the Espionage Act. Well done. Ooh, well thanks, done. Thanks, Nate. Thanks. Ooh. All right. You gave uh, the answer. <laughs> <laughs> that will take us to Dan Campos. Dan Campos, you're next up. Uh, you remember, you can answer the question or you can toss to another uh, 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 contestant to, to help you out. Here's the question. A ransomware attack caused no shortage of fuel, but fear around it caused a run on gas and short-term shortages in the United States. Who got attacked by that ransomware? I believe I know this one uh, because we recently uh, made an episode about uh, this kind of mm -hmm. topics on NTX. So I believe it's Colonial Pipeline, and I believe that the villain in there it was uh, Thanos. No, Dark Side. Dark Side. <laughs> <laughs> wow, double points. That is correct. Well done. Well done, indeed. All right, uh, that takes us to you, Rich Strafalino. Uh -oh. Uh, this is an open, this is an open category, a special, special question. So you can all join in on the answer because the first one to answer is the winner. When I say shortage, you say chips. Toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, 
actually most of those answers were also were correct. <laughs> <laughs> but the answer we were looking for was chips. Well done. Well done. All right. Over to you, Chris Ashley. Here we go. Are we ready? We're ready. This is, this is a deep one. I'm in a three-point stance. It's been a while. All right. What are the three names the company that runs Instagram has operated under since it began in 2004? Yikes. Uh, I'm going to need some help. So ooh, ooh, let, ooh, let, ooh. let me get my pal right back in here. Jenny, hook your boy up. <laughs> okay. I only know this because I'm an old lady. I think it is Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, mm -hmm. and Meta. Two Ooh. out of three. Again, the oh. question was, what are the names of the company that runs Instagram Ooh. now? Ooh, I know, so I know, so I'm not going to count Instagram wrong because it was a little bit of a confusing phrasing. Because they were the, yeah, yeah, okay. Because they were originally a different company. So this is the company that now runs Instagram has been under three names. Oh. What are those? What Not is the face. third one? <laughs> no, someone else answer. I've I've done my part. All right, so let me get my partner in crime, Mr. Dumbwood. What you can, what's the third? Let's go with the Facebook. Facebook. And Meta. Correct. Wow. Correct. Now we would have given uh, bonus points if you had said Meta Platforms Inc. Uh, but Meta does operate under the trade name Meta, so that is still correct with, without the the full incorporated <laughs> Teamwork okay. makes the dream work. Let's go. All right. This, this brings it over to you, Rob Dunwood. Uh, are you ready? No, but let's go ahead and go anyway. Uh, Jack Dorsey stepped down as CEO of Twitter November 29th. What was Jack's first and actually the first ever post on Twitter? I feel like I should know this, but unfortunately I don't. So I want to need a lifeline. Who you want to throw your lifeline to? Patrick, Mr. Norton, you, 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 typing in the background. you might know something like this. <laughs> I see you Googling in the background. Do you mind know this? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll be honest. I Googled this because uh, it just sold as an NFT for $2.9 million. That is correct. And the tweet was, quote, just setting up my Twitter. How did, you, how did you spell Twitter? T T R. Because I can read the Google. Yeah. <laughs> but you spelled it wrong. It was T-W-T-T-R. Oh, he just saying the end said. of it was T-T-R. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that is correct. Just setting up my Twitter without any vowels in the Twitter. All right. Over to you, Nate Langson. You get an open-ended question. Congratulations. Uh, right. Here is your question, Nate. Are you sitting comfortably? No. But that's only because I'm twisting so I can still get the cat in shot. Good. Name one effect you felt from Apple restricting third-party ad tracking. Uh, that would be uh, less relevant ads in Facebook if I used it, which I don't. Wrong! You did not experience that because you don't use Facebook. Oh, okay. Uh, I experienced my wife complaining about it because she does. <laughs> Correct. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> also, I hadn't used the wrong sound effect yet, so I just I had to I had to take the opportunity. Uh, yeah, did anybody actually feel any real effects from Apple restricting third party ad tracking? Other I than I did notice no, all the small me. businesses around me were like really sad that they couldn't <laughs> get personalized ads. I did notice that they were all just yeah. like crying a lot. It had nothing to do with uh, that. Is, that is that is why I know my my wife was was noticing because they uh, they work with a small business. They have a small business. There you go. That makes sense then. All right, Patrick Norton, it's on to you. Are you ready for your question? We keep my hands up so I can't type. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, right? Oh, nice uh, Eckerd Orchard uh, sweatshirt there. I like that. Thank you. Uh, here is your question. GameStop stock started January at eighteen dollars and rose to above three hundred dollars by the end of the month. Name at least one catchphrase associated with the GameStop meme stock phenomenon. Stonks. Stonks! <laughs> Stonk. Literally all I said for days. <laughs> uh, anybody got any other favorites uh, from, from the meme stocks? I mean, to the moon is probably another yeah. common one. Yeah, there's several I can't say on a family friendly podcast. Sure, sure. <laughs> Appreciate you uh, throwing that caveat down. Diamond Hands was another one I enjoyed. Uh, no? Okay. No? All right. 
we are on to uh, the top low, top row. So uh, th this brings you in to the conversation. Amos, Anthony Lamos, are you ready? Uh oh. Digital that's, artist. That's Anthony for yes. <laughs> yes, I, I, I assume so. Digital artist Beeple sold an NFT of his work every day, the first 5,000 days, for $69 million at the 255 year old Christie's auction house. What is Beeple's given name? <coughs> well, you might want to call on Dan. I think Dan might have an idea. Yeah, Dan, hopefully you, you know because I know. All right. If it's only the name, it's Mike. But uh, do you need the full name? <laughs> do you know the full name? Mike uh, Winkle, Winkle, Winkleman? I don't know. Winkle? Correct. Wow. 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 Mike Winkleman, a.k.a. Cool going Beeple. right out. Yeah. Why are the Winkle people always involved in such strange things? The Winkle Voss twins. There's right. the Winkle Vi. Yeah. There's the Winkle Steen. Mm -hmm. the what, what is it about the Winkle? Rip Van Winkle. Yeah. yeah. Didn't Vanilla Ice's name Winkle something? <laughs> Was it really? <laughs> Von Rob Winkle. Van, Rob Van Winkle. Rob Van Winkle. Yeah. 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 Rob All Van right. Yeah. Wait. No. Now we're going. Uh, so, Roger, are you uh, are you participating? I, I see you have your camera off. Uh, but do you want a question? Uh, sure. Hand me a question. All right. Here we go. Roger Chang in May, AT and T announced it was doing something with Warner Media. Be as accurate as possible in describing what that was. Um, oh, geez, I should know this because I was producing that show. And show your work. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I am drawing a com um, complete blank. So as I look across my checkerboard of faces, who should I call? Can someone look? Oh, Rich? Does Rich, Rich know? Does okay. Rich have an so idea? I believe, yes. I believe they're, they were, s they're spinning it out. I'm going to say spinning it out. Spinning it out. Spinning it out is technically correct. Can Creating anyone else? It as as a, selling it. They're selling it. They're, yes. He uh, less it. correct, but less correct than spinning it out. They, they put it out to the farm where old media properties go. <laughs> that does sound like, like they live yeah. out a life. Beautiful farm upstate. Well, Beautiful was, farm upstate. Warner it'll, get to play, to it'll get to play oh, with other brands supply. like Pan Am and TWA. <laughs> the tab. Old uh, ghost no, brand no. Brand. It, was, was it, uh, it was a DirecTV, was it? No. Um, no, no. 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 DirecTV was an AT&T spin out this year. After, yes. Uh, your, uh, but that... Uh, I was going to say I was going to say something along the lines that they spun out uh, a Harry Potter, but I don't think that's correct. <laughs> uh, the 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 precision that would have got you top scores, although you are correct, is creating a joint venture with it in combination with Discovery Inc. That's what I was going to say. Actually, that, then, oh, off. then you were absolutely yeah. correct. <laughs> I was just working on it. I was working up to it. Uh, we are back to the top. Jenny Josephson, are you ready for another question? Sure. All right. Remember the solar winds attack? The solar winds attack happened technically in December 2020, but we had news about it all through 2021. Uh, it's usually referred to as the solar winds attack, but which platform operated by solar winds was the one that was breached? What what solar winds sub brand? Well, I know all I can tell you are the companies that I remember it being affected by. So I'm going to be wrong, but I want to be right while being wrong. Sure. So the NSA was one, I know. Uh, Work it out, Jenny. Uh, uh, the other one was like uh, everything. But I know the NSA was involved. But I don't remember the platform unless it was AWS because that's always the platform. Wrong. Uh, no. Does Does anyone else know the Solar Winds brand? Okay, it's It's something. I, can I jump in? Sure. Yeah. Wrong? I could be a little <clears throat> little wrong about this as well. So it's something like astrological related. I yeah. feel like. Yes. Okay. Oh, is it supernova? Is it? No. It's like Solaris or Polaris? No. Is that, no. It, oh, I, I knew it's like something astrological. I, I inserted into so many 
headlines. Why don't I remember? It's astrological, this? and I'll give you all a hint. It has a belt. Oh, Orion. Oh, Orion. Uh, Orion. Orion. I definitely didn't know Solar that. So Orion. Very good yeah. at context. I couldn't remember. Jenny that. got it. Well done. <laughs> Yes, it was handed to me on a platter of stars by Tom Merritt, and I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back around to you, Dan Campos. LG stopped making its own phones this year and licensed out its brand. What was LG's share of the market in Q3 2020? Uh, as close to the percentage as you can get. In Q3 2020, what was LG's share of the smartphone market? All right. If uh, they actually came out of the market, I believe that it was really low. So I am guessing about three percent. Uh, lower. Oh, uh, what? One percent? A little higher. Uh, okay, two percent. <laughs> one point nine one percent. Good Add answer. Up. Good answer. That is a <laughs> lot higher than I would have guessed if that was my question. I, I was going to go less than one. I was thinking. Yeah. So was I. Yeah. Uh, it was less by the time they actually got out, but the, by Q3 was the last uh, was the last market share that they had on the day that they they got out of it. All right, to you, Rich Straffolino. LG stopped making its own phones. I'm sorry, I already read that one. The ruling in the Apple versus <laughs> Epic <9%. case. laughs> The ruling in the Apple versus Epic case came down on September 10th, going mostly Apple's way, but ordering Apple to allow mentions outside. Uh, two ways of paying uh, outside of its app store, which they eventually got to stay for. But focusing on that September 10th decision in that original case, who was the judge? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, old judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers. Indeed. Wow. Right off the top of your Santa hat. Well oh. done. Got the quiz brain on. I, people are looking at you with uh, suspicion after that. Yeah. Uh, you write it so many times that that name. <laughs> I have an Aunt Yvonne, so it. it if you it write the show, I believe you know. That's my. <laughs> that's always my logo. All right, Chris Ashley, this one's coming to you. All right, let's do this. And it's an Apple question. Oh boy. And I'm actually curious if anybody on the pedal could get it, but you get first shot. All right, cool. Name one of the Apple announcements from April twentieth. It was 420, but that doesn't relate to the answer. <laughs> I'm going to take a guess. Uh, they announced a new Apple TV. They did. Do you remember what it was called? Uh, no. Nate has a finger up. You might want to call on Nate. All right. Come on, Nate. Bring bring the heat. Is it the 4K, Apple TV 4K? And it Netflix? was, indeed, uh, the Apple TV 4K. I Anybody remember considering remember? it, but I was like, uh, and I never pulled the trigger, but I just couldn't remember that part. Uh, uh, my Always my guess with Apple is better cameras on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> better Not screen. Not this time. Not with this the time. phones, okay. but they did they didn't I think they announced a new color of an iPhone technically, but uh not one of the main announcements. Anybody remember anything else from that announcement? HomePod Mini? Not that one, no. Oh. Is, is, the is that when they announced that? their uh I can't even think of the name of them, but their tile like devices? Uh, yes. You don't remember uh, what it's called. called the the Air the air tag. The air tags. Clones. Air tags. That's it. Air yeah. towel clone three. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, I think it's hilarious that you remembered the, the announcement, which was probably the only significant announcement that day, but you, but none of us could remember the name <laughs> of the actual product. Uh, the other two things were the iPad Pro with M1 and the iMac with M1. Air tag mm. and Apple TV 4K. There were also some uh, Apple TV <clears throat> Plus announcements and stuff, but those are, that's all the hardware there. All right. Uh, it's coming over to you, Rob Dunwood. Are you prepared? Let's go. Facebook took an aggressive position regarding an Australian law this past year. What was that action? Is, is that back when they passed a law, Australia did, that made Facebook and Google pay for content from like news sources? That was the uh, that is the law in question. Yeah, it had and not I, passed when Facebook took this action, but they took it preemptively, saying if you pass that. And, and I think uh, Facebook pretty much said, "No, nah, we're good." 
In what way did they say not working? <laughs> they they re, they refused to. Uh, oh, I'm trying. I, I can't remember. Anybody I remember, else? I remember this story, but I can't remember the specifics. Of I think it, Dan, but... I think Dan will jump in and help you. Yeah, uh, Go ahead, much, jump in, Dan. Uh, Australia stopped existing uh, in Facebook at that moment. Well, a little overstating it. A little overstating it. Oh well, yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Con they content, pulled the uh, news feed? content. Yeah, they yeah. blocked news. all news content on Facebook in Australia. Correct. Mm, that is yeah. that is correct. Yeah. I, I was thinking that's what it was, but I, was, I don't. Did they go that far? I, I couldn't remember if they all actually right. did that. If, if they, they did, just, they did. But here's the bonus mm -hmm. question: Do you remember how long that action lasted? How long was news gone from Facebook in Australia? I must say that 24 was, hours. Yeah, it was it was only a couple days. A couple days is closer. Yeah. A week. A week. Less than a week. <laughs> Six days. No, it was Four five. calling it was five. birds, three French. <laughs> 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 and there's still no news in Facebook. Many dozens of hours. <laughs> uh okay. This is one only someone who writes for Bloomberg could get. Nate Langson, are you ready? All right. Oh uh, yeah, go on. I have no idea of any. I I would not have gotten this one. I'm just gonna say, like, there. This is this is this is. We're getting into the tricky ones now. All on right. January fourth, what did the Taiwanese United Daily News report that Foxconn had been commissioned to prototype? Got this. Uh, I mean, was it was it the Apple car? No, not a car. But it was for Apple. Apple VR headsety sunglassy. No. AR um, VR. No, I'm gonna have to pass. I can't remember. Anybody? I thought it was, I, I thought it was an well. EV too. Yeah, I thought it was two types of foldable phones. Uh. uh there was a lot of talk about prototyping cars, but that was later. Yeah, it was later yeah. in the year. Oxcon. <laughs> All right. Uh, what may be the most difficult question that is created for this quiz <laughs> goes to Patrick Norton. Are you excited? I'm so excited. All right. Slightly terrified. Everybody help Patrick with this one. Uh, Please. I'll be very impressed <laughs> if children. anyone gets gets uh, gets this. What did the GPT-3 DAL-E add-on do a good job drawing when given the short natural language phrase as a prompt. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so Doll E was 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 a uh, was an add-on for the GPT-3 algorithm, and you could give it a prompt, say, "Draw this," and it would draw it. What what did it consider to have done a good job drawing? God, this uh, is the exact was... second I became old. <laughs> and it was used as an example in the press release. There's actually a couple of them. Uh, and one that it did not do as well on. Okay. Flower? Uh, no, there's no flower. Can a can car? I take a stab? Yeah. Yeah. Sheep? No sheep. Uh, I thought Dolly. A pineapple. Maybe. Not a pineapple. I thought, I thought it was a cat. Was I closer? No. Was it an avocado? <laughs> it was an <laughs> avocado. What? Not oh. just an avocado. Toast. Toast. Avocado toast. It was not avocado toast. Wait, what was it? Was, was it like furniture? Yes. No, yes, it yes. was. <laughs> An I'm, avocado know, armchair. Armchair. Rob, you had that. Wow. No, I didn't have it. I looked it up. You looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he had it. He just had it handed to him. The other the other one it did well on, uh, that there's just no way. Uh, <laughs> a baby daikon radish in a tutu walking a dog. Yeah, sure. Right. Uh, and it did not do as well on a snail made of harp. Oh, that's a tough snail. one. Yeah, but especially because they didn't specify whether they meant the beer or the musical instrument. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, we are around to you, Amos, Anthony oh Lamos. It, it's almost important that we say both names now because people, so many people have been like, I didn't know Amos was the same person as Anthony Lemos in the credits. Right, because they hear it in the credits, yeah. Amos. <laughs> On the uh, January 8th show, we teased that Roku bought some Quibi. What did they buy? I'm going to go with Jenny because she looks excited and I have no idea. 
I think they bought the leftover original programming that was on Quibi that didn't ever air on Quibi or didn't air on Apple Stock. Indeed. Yeah. 75 shows and documentaries. That is exactly what they bought. Wow. Oh. Well done. Still got it. All right. We're back to Roger. If he so desires, he keeps turning off his video though. So I'm not, right. I'm, I'm trying to conserve bandwidth. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, what did Verizon get rid of on May 3rd? Was it CNET? No, CNET was not owned by Verizon. Oh, what, CBS uh, owned uh, CNET. No, uh, and it's not Yahoo because they still have that. No, uh, they don't. They don't no. still have Yahoo. I, I mean, I know the answer to that also. So if they don't have Yahoo, <laughs> and they and don't you know have... they did. So they got rid of Yahoo? Yes, correct. <laughs> Guys, it's a law of the internet. Everyone always gets rid of Yahoo. <laughs> <Running down. laughs> I hate Yahoo. I used to work there. I love it very much, but yeah. We also would have accepted AOL. AOL. Uh, both both of them were were ditched in the in the same. Uh, so, uh, thank you all uh, for playing Big Tech Quiz of 2021. Uh, very much appreciate this. Hope you had a good time. I certainly did. Uh, so give yourselves a round of applause, and I'll help with some sound effects. Uh, also, thanks to our brand new boss, Maxim. Maxim timed it just right to be the last new boss before we stopped uh, checking for new bosses of the year. Everybody else is going to have to pile in uh, to 2022. But if you do become a new boss of Patreon, we always thank you on the show. So thank you, Maxim. And thank you, Len Peralta, uh, who was uh, illustrating today's show. Len, what have you drawn for us today? Or is he there? I think he, I lost think that he may have left. He may have not drawn. He drew us something, though, and it was with Santa uh, with the new DTNS logo as his face. And if you've seen the art, you know that his lack of presence is befitting the art. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a Santa bot, uh, which you can get if you are a patron of Len at patreon.com slash Len. You can also buy it at lenperaltastore.com. Uh, you please help him pay for a new internet connection, folks. Buy his art. With just five <laughs> simple payments. He needs it. Uh, Jenny Josephson, thank you so much uh, for, for coming back on our last show of the year. We really appreciate it. I have to tell you that nothing so much prepared me for the pandemic and getting along with my virtual colleagues as having virtual colleagues in 2014. So I could not be more <laughs> grateful. <laughs> This place really trained me to love and value people, even if I couldn't hug them. Aw, that's so nice. I'm glad, dude. Uh, that's a lovely sentiment. Uh, before you go, get out of here, though. You have anything going on you want to tell folks about? Yes. Okay. I never managed to announce this, but I do work at Intuit QuickBooks, helping small businesses, you know, uh, uh, get through these really difficult times. And because I really enjoy them, I made them a present. I built them a baby uh, video UI at intuit.me slash the hub. And if you go there, you could see a video that I made. You could see like all these different videos that all people across QuickBooks made. And we did it for no other reason than we really like small businesses. And that was really fun. And it's a fun place to work, even if I can't work uh, with all of you. So um, go check it out, intuit.me slash the hub. Oh, thank you, Jenny Josephson. Uh, and let's quickly thank all of our contestants today. Patrick Norton. Thank you. Nate Langson. <laughs> Woo, thank you. Wait, no, I should cheer myself. I mean, thanks. Yeah, yeah, please. No one else is going to cheer, we, uh, apparently. So, yeah, go ahead and cheer yourself. That's totally fine. Uh, Rob Dudwood. Thanks for having me, folks. Chris Ashley. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Rich Drafalino. Truly a definitive pleasure. And Dan Campos. This was increíble. Ah, gracias. And Anthony Lemos. Okay, Amos. DCStreamathon.org. Thank you. Indeed. <laughs> uh, this is our last live show for 2021. We're off tomorrow for the holidays. DTNS will continue next week with our special holiday pre recorded lineup, starting with our retro show on Monday. We're going back to the 70s. We'll be back live in person next month, Tuesday, January 4th, where we will be live at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2130 UTC. Find out more about that at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. See you next year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and all that stuff.
This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and host, Rich Straffolino. Video producer and Twitch producer, Joe Kuntz. Associate producer, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. News host, writer, and producer, Jen Cutter. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackerman. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scott is one, BioCow, Captain Kipper, Jack Shid, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting from Dan Christensen. Video feed by Sean Way. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A, Acast, Creative Ask Arts, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Trace Gaynor. Patreon support from Stefan Brown. Contributors for this week's shows included Chris Ashley and Scott Johnson, along with Rob Dunwood, Dan Campos, and Patrick Norton. Guests on this week's show were Nate Langson and our consulting producer, Jenny Josephson. Thanks to all the patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>